C, A, L, I, F, O, R, N, I, A, C, A, L, I, F, O, R, N, I, A, I love you. After the shit show that was the Korean War, the US tried to rapidly reorganize their units for a potential fallout battlefield, because war. War never changes. One of the victims of this reorganization was the 40th Infantry Division and elements of the 111th Armored Cavalry Regiment, which were fused together like Britain fusing a bunch of car companies together, thus creating the 40th Armored Division, more famously known as the Grizzly Division, which became part of California's National Guard. I'm not going to go into the organization of the unit, as Battle Order has already done a video on that. However, what I am going to talk about are the tanks, as you can see in the title of the video. So all you need to know is that the unit was active from 1954 to 1967, and that it being a National Guard unit, it was heavily understaffed, like Ori. The only light tank the Grizzly Division possessed was the M41 Walker Bulldog. The M41 has its own origins going back to World War II, that being the M24 Chaffee. During the Korean War, don't worry, this won't be the last time I'm going to talk about that, the US initially deployed with M24 Chaffees, as that was the only tank they could swiftly deploy to the Korean Peninsula after the Fire Nation attacked. However, they immediately ran into a problem, that being the North Koreans also had tanks, most notably the T-3485. The M24 had difficulties penetrating the frontal armor of the T-34, if it was a T-3476, then the Chaffee would have had no problem dealing with them, as early T-34s were pieces of shit. However, as mentioned, this is the 85 variant, an up-armored, more reliable, and most importantly, more ergonomically sound variant of the T-34. Not to mention that they were crewed by North Koreans. You know, Asians, who are on average much smaller than your typical white boy, making the T-3485 have much better ergonomics than it has any business doing. And this is where many people think the M24 story ends in terms of involvement in Korea, when heavier tanks, more suited to counter these armored threats, arrived. However, that can't be further from the truth. As the war dragged on, T-34s were becoming less and less of a problem due to said heavier tanks, and the Chaffee was mostly utilized in the support role. However, this didn't mean that the M24 couldn't knock out other tanks, in fact, the US started to supply M24s with M338 APT rounds, which was basically a blunt nose round which was able to negate armor sloping up to 55 degrees, making it possible to effectively take out T3485s from the front. Like the Sherman, the Chaffee was also preferred over the heavier Pershings and Pattons in the mountainous terrain. Prior to the Korean War in 1946, the US attempted to replace the M24 with the development of the T37 with three pilots ordered with all three having something different about them. However, development took so long that by the time the first pilot was finished, there was already a replacement for it. That replacement being the M41 Walker Bulldog. Produced by Cadillac, the M41 was the light tank the US was looking for. With a decent 76mm cannon, the tank had excellent cross-country capabilities. The M41 used parts and components already being produced, lowering the cost and production time. The M41's hull would be standardized, being able to be modified for other duties like the M42 Duster, M57 APC, and M44 and M52 Howitzer motor carriages. However, due to the Korean War, development was rushed, causing multiple production and design flaws. Thankfully, most of these issues were quickly fixed in later variants, but the army still had a resentment against the Bulldog, amongst those resentments being to cancel the entire program. Despite this, the M41 was generally liked by their crews, being distributed to multiple countries, like with them still being used in Taiwan, modern-day Vietnam, Guatemala, the Dominican Republic, and Uruguay. The M41 first saw combat during the disastrous Bay of Pigs invasion, 
where they were used to moderate success, having to be abandoned by their crews once they ran out of ammo. Which one? No, I don't care which one! Get them both! That man's an imposter! That man is the imposter! Once again, going back to the Korean War, we get the beninging of a family of vehicles, that family being the Pattons. The main difference between the M26 and M46 is the engine. While the Pershing used the Ford GAF V8 engine, the M46 used a Continental V12, which gave it 700 horsepower compared to the V8's 500. The M46 added a new fume extractor to help the crew not inhale toxic fumes from extracted casings and an extra idler reel to both sides to help with track tension. They also moved the exhaust pipes from the middle to the sides of the engine deck. In Korea, the M46 performed well, especially compared to the Pershing. However, its large size meant that it wasn't well suited for the mountainous terrain, so the Sherman was still preferred. No more, Mr. Kimball, I need to go to the bathroom. No, nothing, there is no bathroom. After the Korean War, the M46 was quickly phased out for the M47. The M47 has its origins in the T-42 program, which was intended as the US's early Cold War main battle tank. However, due to multiple development delays, the T-42 didn't make it in time for the Korean War, causing panic amongst US generals, as the US, prior to the Korean War, was undergoing rapid demilitarization. Many old tanks that the US had were either kept in museums or left outside military bases as a memorial. I've also heard somewhere that during the Korean War, the US had to take these tanks off those memorials due to a high demand for tanks. However, after the Korean War, the T-42 program was completely dropped and instead took the turret off the T-42 and plopped it onto a modified M-46 hull, pretty much making this a stopgap tank. Much like the M-41, the M-47 was sent to multiple countries, for example, South Korea, Croatia, Belgium, West Germany, Italy, Greece, France, Austria, Spain, Turkey, and so on, with Iran still having multiple in service. The M47 went through multiple variants, with one of them incorporating a modified fire control system from the British Centurion. The M48 is the final evolution in the Patton family. Finally, a medium tank that the US wanted. No longer do they need to rely on outdated and stopgap tanks. The M48 got a new cast hull, compared to its predecessors only having partially cast hulls. The new hull also had this feature, where if the tank ran over a mine and its torsion bar suspension was damaged, it could quickly and easily be fixed as the torsion bars weren't molded into the hull like on the M46 or M47. The M48 incorporated a new turret, which the US at the time extremely liked. And no, it's not because of the Soviet T-54. This was just the direction tank design was going towards. The British, slow to catch up as they were still cucking around in their World War II era centurions, realized they might need a new tank, designing the Chieftain, the most sexy looking mid Cold War tank to ever exist. Fight me. The M48 got its baptism of fire during the Vietnam War, where, if used correctly, performed exceptionally well. However, the thick jungle meant it had to be selective when being sent out on the missions. The M48 underwent multiple variants, and oh boy, there's a lot of them. The T-48, the prototype for the M-48, is identifiable by having this small road wheel that helps with track tension. The M-48, the basic bitch, easily identifiable as it has a remote control 50 cal. M-48A1, this one is easily identifiable by having the iconic turret cupola that's giving me M-3 Lee vibes. M-48A2, fuel injection gasoline engine, its identifiable feature is the engine deck. M-48A3, this one is powered by a diesel engine because the US was shifting towards multi-fuel engines. Its main identifiable feature is the engine deck being slightly different from the A2s. M48A4, an M48A1 hole but modernized to function like an A3. Its identifiable features is the 105mm gun. M48A5, an M48A4 without the machine gun turret which is its primary identifiable feature. However, the A5 was not a conversion unlike the A4. Its predominant identifiable feature is, as mentioned, the lower profile cupola. M67 flamethrower tank, ordered by the Marine Corps, because it's the Marine Corps. M48 GAU-8, basically an M48 with the rotary cannon of the A2 Warthog, because why the fuck not. M48 Marksman SPAAG, 
the virgin brother of the M48 GAU-8, and the M48 T5, an M48 with a square mantlet ordered by the Germans. Like the M47, the M48 was used by fucking everyone. <laughs> With some still being used by Turkey, Lebanon, Taiwan, Greece, Morocco, South Korea, Thailand, and Iran. Guys, I need help identifying this tank. The M60 may look like a slightly upgraded M48, which, despite many people claiming otherwise, isn't that far from the truth. It's just heavily dependent on what we mean by that. Yes. When we compare the standard M48 to the standard M60, then it's an entirely different tank. However, if we're comparing the M48A3, which entered service in 1957, with most A1s and A2s being converted into A3s in 1959, then the differences start to diminish. And by diminish, I mean they have the exact same diesel engine. This was done for a reason. The US was trying to pursue multi-fuel engines, ones that could burn gasoline and diesel as other NATO members were predominantly using diesel. Multi-fuel engines were used as early as 1949 in the M35 logistics truck. However, they've never been done in this scale before, eventually resulting in the AGT-1500 gas turbine currently used in the Abrams. The Soviets actually beat the US to the multi-fuel tank engine as seen on the T-72 and T-80 series of tanks. So where were we? Oh yeah, the M60. The M60 was the US's first main battle tank, and I hear you claim heresy. It's obviously the M46 or even the M26, right? No. The term main battle tank is extremely loose, meaning you'll have people interpreting the term in many different ways. Some people think that the term MBT means that it's a tank that strikes a balance between all hard factors, speed, armor, and firepower, leading to such claims that the Panther was the first main battle tank. But if that were true, that means the Sherman, T-34, hell, most medium tanks would have been a main battle tank, which simply isn't true. Others claim that the term means that it was the tank predominantly used by X Nation, meaning that the fucking Renault 35 was a main battle tank during the invasion of France. Then there's the final interpretation, one which I am a part of, that being designation. If it says MBT in the designation, then it is indeed an MBT. However, I'm going to be a hypocrite and say that the T-28 is not a gun motor carriage despite it holding the T-95 designation at some point, as there it comes down to doctrine. Fight me. One of the many things that the M60 brings to the table over its predecessors is the new 105mm cannon, which is a licensed copy of the L7 used on the Centurion, which allowed it to fire more modern ammunition. The M60 also has a different hull shape, which despite its appearance, is still fully cast. The not so many production variants are the M60, looks like an M48A5 but with a new hole mold, the M60A1 has a sexier turret, the M62 Starship, the Ravenfield tank with a 152mm gun launcher capable of firing ATGMs and overall the tank sucked ass, the M60A3, an M60A1 but with a laser rangefinder, and the 120S, because why not? The M60 platform has been upgraded to death as seen on the 120S, or whatever the fuck the Iranians made. The M60 also never officially got the patent nickname, despite it looking almost identical to the M48. So, if anyone calls it a patent, then you can um actually them until they uninstall Reddit. Despite this video being about California's tank division, as you can see, the video completely derailed into something else, as I had no sense of direction while making this video. I mean, technically, it's not clickbait, but I also could have talked about the Grizzly Division rather than just about the tanks they used. Anyway, this was the story of how Martin Luther King invented sliced bread. The end. Fuck me!